Well, speaking of coming right back, here we are at the Mineral Point Gymnasium as we move into the women's side of things. It's the championship match, state tournament ticket on the line here for the young ladies. And we are going to get things started at 100 and 107 pounds as uh, we go back and forth here. Now, I think they're, I think they're, uh, they're going to do uh, wrestlebacks. As Looks well. like they've changed their mind they now. They did change their and mind. They're going to just do championships for the women. We're going to stick mainly with that, but we will keep an eye on the wrestleback action on the other end there, because that is going to be uh, Jaron Grimsled. He's going to take on from, well, oh, that's at 113. I got to get up to the right yep. weight class. That's Kite against um, Orloff. In our championship match, which we want to watch because that has real good implications to Southwest Wisconsin. We have Leah Gross out there against um, Kylie Klum, the sophomore against the freshman. I saw in the seating meeting that um, each of these two athletes have wrestled several times this year. Gross winning one, and I believe Klum winning one at least, if not two. So they've seen each other before, Ken, so uh -huh. we'll see how it goes out tonight. Down in the far end there, it's as we expected, Orloff is on a mission down there against the little the young freshman Elliot Kite. But you still gotta be really proud of Kite's performance today. He came in here with a 500 record and he's going to Madison. Yeah, absolutely. We have uh, two mats, uh, two cameras on the championship match. Upper right, lower left. Luca Gross gives up the first takedown to um, Kylie Klum. Klum, you said, was in the state tournament last year, right? Yes, I believe it's she placed fourth. Placed fourth as a freshman. Yep. Oh, there's a pin down there in our wrestleback action, and that would be um, Orloff coming up with the pin there, and he will stay in second place, so that means he will be two, and um, Kite will be three at that weight class. Okay. So now we'll see where they go next. They're going to stay there or go to women's action. Oh, Luca Gross was in trouble there. Tried to kick out of that. Now Club comes back across. She's got a deep half Nelson in there. Oh, the time's going to save her. That's good. We will go to uh, 138 pounds here, Kirk, on the guy's side in the wrestle back. And uh, we'll go to that one. That's going to be Reed Sawyer of New Lisbon. That's and right. He uh, is going to be taking on a Wayland Hargrove of Aquinas. So it's a senior in Sawyer with Hargrove, the sophomore. Yeah, that wrestleback's way up to 138 already. Not totally sure why they chose to go this way. Yeah. So I think the wrestlebacks might be done before the women's action. I, I liked how they had originally said we'd have uh, two championship matches going on at the same time with the women and, you know, in a short period of time. Well, the only thing I could see that would make a difference to that is that maybe the men's wrestlebacks will be done a little sooner and then those, some of those teams that are farther away can head home, but... Here in the championship match, Luca right now trailing five to zero. She's gonna give up um, to Klum. She's gonna give up another reversal though, and it's gonna be seven zero now. Luca just needs to look for that big move now, or leave just any sort of scoring move so she can get herself on the scoreboard. And then that changes your whole attitude about the match. Right. And gives you that ray of, um, I can do this. Yep. Two to one on the far end down there. Like you said before, that is the match between um, New Lisbon, which would be Sawyer, um, Reed Sawyer, and he's wrestling Wayland Hargrove from Aquinas at 138 action. And again, those matches down there uh, are the second and third place matches. Yep. Getting the true spot. True second, which also, as Ken mentioned earlier, with the seating going on next week, you know, we've even seen where even some of these wrestlers all watching in our championship match, Klum has got an arm bar in, and she's trying to force Luca Gross over to her back again. And this could be the end of it for the young freshman here, as Klum has got this in pretty tight this time. And there's the fall. Nice job by Kylie Klum, as she's going to make a return trip to the Madison Field 
or excuse me, the Cole Center. Hard to not call it the field house, but it has been that for quite a while since the 1998. 337 the pin time. Yep. Nice season though for Luca Gross. He ends up the year with the win earlier today, 24 and 10 on the year. So a nice year for the freshman. That's a, that's a lot of matches. Yes, it good is. Good job. Yep, good for her. So now we're gonna move to 107 there. And that will be Gracie Roma, how do you pronounce that again, Rombolowski? Rombolowski. Rombolowski. Rom, Rombolowski. Yeah. Okay, and she takes on Brooklyn Lull, the find, um, I think she's only a freshman. Mm. They don't have it in there though. Typo air. But we do know she's related to the Lull family from Fenimore. So we know she knows how to wrestle, and she's oh. showing that right now with a good double leg takedown. And she's got um, Romolowski on her back and is gonna come out of that with a 4-0 lead. This might have been uh, one of the areas where there was a lot of discussion. And uh, I think these two may have potentially split during the year. I, I was thinking this was, uh, Fenimore did ask for a higher seed, but then I think they finally conceded it. But now you can see why they did at least brought it up. Yeah. Because um, Lull is doing a fine job of, she's already up four to nothing, and she's gonna add some more on to that. Down the other end, it's six to two now in favor of Hargrove, I believe, is winning down there. Yep, I'm pretty sure he is. Because um, Sawyer moved back to his blue uniform. Did he? <laughs> uh, now he's caught in a cradle and he could give up the fall here. Because now we're working the heck out of our officials because we got assistant referee in the championship and assistant referee in the third place match, yep. which is kind of cool. They came here to work. They there don't want to sit on the sidelines. Rombowski uh, came in with a 10 and one record, so that explains her number one seed. Yep. Yeah, because she went in that um, semifinal match. She got credit for two buys there. Yep, that's right. I don't know why they, that was, Ironic that they use a 16 person bracket for every weight class, but whatever. Victories are victories. There you go. <laughs> 9 to 2 down there in our third place match. And 7 nothing here in the championship. That'll be the end of period number one, and again, low, well out in front here, seven nothing at 107 pounds. Coming up at 114 pounds, it'll be Jelenic and Klum. North Crawford Seneca and Darcia Jelenic and Marissa Klum looking for the state tournament trip. Should be an interesting match. Ten four, you're scored down below on the uh, wrestleback match with Reed Sawyer. Another pinning combination by Lull, and there's the fall. Yep, that's the end of that one. We'll move on to one fourteen now as Lull. Get punches her ticket to the state tournament. Be wrestling in Madison on Thursday. 2.30 is her pin time. So like you said, that'll bring out Darcy Jelenic from North Crawford Seneca, and she will be taking on the other club, Marissa Klum, the junior from Westby. Near a fall down there as um, Hargrove has just been doing a fine job there against Reed Sawyer and he's just been kind of dominating that match. Last 10 seconds there, and it looks like he's gonna win this out with like a 15 to four win down there. So that'll move us up to 144 down there in the consolation match. Or should say the placement matches between second and third. So that gives, at that weight class, 
Aquinas gets second place there with that 12 to four win. So Sawyer will end up third and Hargrove will end up second. So now we move on to 144 down there. Still no score in our championship match in the women's final at 114. And now we move up to 144 in the placement matches down there between second and third. And that would be from Iowa Grant, the fine freshman Brock Hinderman, as he's gonna take on Zach Moline, who wrestled one heck of a match there in the third place match to beat Cole McKittrick and deny him a return to the state tournament. No duck under series here for Jelenic to pick up the takedown and then a quick escape here by Klum. It's two to one. 35 seconds remaining in period number one. Try to quickly switch over and give some highlights of what's going on in the Dells as long as we're online here. Uh huh. Champion at 106, I'll just read a couple of them off, is Shane Roken from Dodgeville. Malene with the pinning combination. He's got the, the arms tied up here in a cross-face chest crusher move is what I call it. Yep. And uh, boy, he is very close to the pin. There, and it, there is. it is. Yep. He's going to move on. So Malene comes from back in losing in the semis to um, Ian Crap Comes all the way back and he gets um, second place for Hin the Aquinas Blue Golds. Yeah. Hinderman third. Brock Hinderman. Brock Hinderman, fine freshman, at least gets to go to Madison and stays active in the tournament. So now we'll move up to, down there on mat number one, we'll move up to 150, where we'll take on another Iowa Grant Highland wrestler, and Tyson Inhoff takes his shot at another Aquinas wrestler in Trevor Paulson. 2-2 two -two score now with Jelenic and Klum as Klum now looking to try and come in with a double leg. Jelenic, a little taller, has the leverage and is able to fight that off. See Ethan Haiti from Richland Center, he ended up second behind Hawk and Peterson at the Dells sectional at 113. 120, Charlie Might was a winner. At 126, Reed Spurley, we talked about him. This time he decided to wrestle and he beat Ethan Aird from Darlington Blackhawk in the championship, six to four. Wow, four three score here now in the championship match. Klum coming up, trying to get a takedown after trailing here four to three. She's gotta get that head free and she does get the takedown and she'll lead five four. Lifts Drake. and brings Jelenic back down to the mat. Drake Ingham from Prairie Sheen, your champion at 132. 138 is Marcus McIntyre from Broadhead Judah. 144 is Owen Seferud from Darlington Blackhawk. Danny Heiser, your returning state champion from Evansville, champion there at 150. Braylon Goble, your champion at 157. Jeremy Avery, your champion at 165. Espen Squeers, your champion from Austin at 175. 190, Hayden Dillon, the fine um, junior champion there. Cole Brenninger ends up in fourth place mm. and does not qualify. Or wait, maybe they haven't wrestled that yet. Oh, okay. They haven't wrestled yet? They haven't wrestled that yet. Maybe they haven't wrestled at 175 yet. Okay. They don't have it in there. Jelenic oh. picks up an escape and we have a tied match, 5-5. Five, five. Okay. And... They're at 165 in their championship matches. I'll stop reading those. Okay. Klum, <laughs> Klum gives the, uh, says, we'll just go back to neutral, gives Jelenic the escape and uh, get started here in the third period, down by one. Down in our um, wrestleback match between Paulson and Emhoff, 2 0 score in favor of Emhoff. He defers and Paulson chooses neutral. Well, the wrestling uh, is going to determine things on the mat here with the takedown with Klum and Jelenic. Both these wrestlers have picked up takedowns on each other. Yep, 6-5 score, though, in favor right now of Jelenic. 
High crotch series by Jelenic. Stop and trying to spin around behind. And will get the takedown is Klum. Nice move there. Showed some quickness on her feet. And it's 7-6. Jelenic up and back down to the mat off from a lift by Klum. Now Jelenic will sit out and turn in. Under a minute to go, 55 seconds. Seven up. That's the score, seven apiece. We've seen this with um, men athletes, and I even see it with some of the female athletes. You know, I know they don't want to cut their hair, they don't want to contain it, but you know, when it gets to this point in the match, you got to feel for Marcy Klum a little, or Marissa Klum, her hair's hanging in her face, and it is impeding her uh, vision. Yep. Well, that time, Jelenic able to get the takedown. Klum gets up right away. Yep. Minute. Or 25 seconds left. 9-8, Jelenic. Okay. Yep. Next takedown's going to win it, if there is one. Down to 15 seconds. Got to take the shot. Here comes Klum. She lifts and brings Jelenic to the mat and a half Nelson. Boy, that's what My you want to do. goodness. Look at that. Nice job by both the Clum girls here as they both end up champions for Westby. Wow. 13 to nine, your final. Yeah, congratulations to uh, Marissa. She wrestled tough there, picking up the win. 12-9, as Kirk said, is your final score. Oh yeah, they did change it. So, so now we move on to 120 there. And that should be an interesting matchup as your um, fine wrestler Delay Delaney Collins from Mineral Point. She will take on Madison Glass from Kickapoo. It's gonna be a tall task for the young freshman from Kickapoo. Yeah, uh, Delea coming in, uh, boy, 22 and two. Uh, she just, I think she's even, she's ranked in the state, and might even be somewhat ranked nationally. Uh-huh. A real quick takedown and a cradle, which is not unfamiliar with, and there's the quick fall. In less, I'll see that be um, 16 seconds. My goodness, yeah. Real fast there. Look for her to do some great things next week at the state tournament for the Mineral Point Pointers. Yes. So that moves us on to 126. And that's where we'll see another very good freshman from North Crawford Seneca, Frankie Groom, as she will be taking on from Lancaster, Amelia Johnson. In the third period in our, wrestle, our placement match down there, Tyson Emhoff holds a 5-0 lead over Paulson from Aquinas. So here on mat uh, number one, this championship match. Is Frankie Groom from North Crawford Seneca and Amelia Johnson from Lancaster. Should be a dandy one here. Yep. Looking at the records, Kind of have to lean it towards Groom. She's been having a great year for um, North Crawford Seneca, 30 and seven as a freshman. Yeah. And um, Jansen now is 16 and three, uh, 16 and 13 on the year. And right away, she's got the takedown on an early arm bar, and she's got Johnson a lot of trouble. She can just hold that over there, put the elbow in the ear type thing, as we always say. But Johnson's credit, she's fighting hard. She is. 7-0 in our placement match there. We're in the last 30 seconds now. Down there with Emhoff and um, Paulson going at it, which then will move us up to 157. And we'll kind of want to watch that 57 pound match down there because that will be Nolan Waldner from Ithaca Westing coming out there. And he's got a shot going, well, it's gonna be a hard shot, but he's gonna have to take on this fine sophomore, Jackson Bussey from Iowa Grant Highland. There, quickly, um, Groom gets a nice arm bar in, and she pushes Johnson over to her back and gets a pin in a minute 23 was the pin time for the young lady from North Crawford. All right. Taking a look here, uh, we are going to go to 132 pounds, and it's going to be Olivia Ball of Lancaster, 19-9, Top seed. She is going to be taking on Maddie Townsend of Kickapoo Lafarge. 
Maddie coming in now. Uh, she picked up the win earlier over uh, uh, Catherine uh, McElhouse, McElhouse, and uh, she now has a record of 13 and 14. Well, she actually should, if they do that the way they say, she should get credit she for three get wins. Get three wins, yeah. So she'd be 15 and 14 now. She'd be slightly above Somebody 500. She'd be above 500, yeah. yeah. The way they're doing that is whatever. Wins are wins. Now we enter our um, Russell back action down there. And as we mentioned, that is um, Jackson Bussey. He takes on. Oh, wait, that's That's, that's uh, Gibbs. Seth Green Greeno. Why did we switch? Oh. Got a pinning combination here with Ball of Lancaster. Boy, Townsend trying to reverse the situation. She does. Why did they skip Walner's match? Uh, that's a good question. Did they say there shouldn't be one now? I don't know. I, I see he should get one. Walner has never wrestled uh, Bussy. Walder won his match. Yeah. Yeah, I have it down that they should have too, unless one of them wasn't feeling good. It's hard to say. Well, that's maybe Walner decided that, or yeah, Walner, or whoever. We'll find out here in a little bit when they read place winners. Yeah. So at 150, that was um, Emhoff that won there. So he will be your second place finisher at 150. And then um, Trevor Paulson will be three. 5-2 score here with a minute five to go in the first period in the women's championship side at 132 pounds. Now they've got the score right. It's 6-4, they say, so with Ball of Lancaster winning. We do have Seth Greeno down in action there, which we kind of want to highlight him a little bit. He's a chance to move up a spot. He is going to be a state qualifier for DeSoto, but he is wrestling um, Emerson Moan. And that's a good match down there right now. It's um, Reno out in front, two to one. Yeah. Townsend trying to get in on a single leg, but Ball has that front headlock now. Yeah, based on the records, you would have thought Ball would maybe have a slight advantage here, but. Um, so far, oh, there's a nice lockup cradle. And oh she's boy. got her in a lot of trouble in a hurry. Yep, yep. There it is. Yep. Good move to that inside. She got the leg and the head and slapped in a real nice tight cradle. And the match ended that quick here, 21 seconds. So that would be a um, 339 pin, no, 139 pin for um, Olivia Ball from Lancaster. And she will move on to the state tournament. So now we move up to 138, and we'll have another Kickapoo Lafarge wrestler coming out here, and that is Gianna Bobel taking on Raquel Benson from Lancaster. Yeah, I think it's. I think they say that is. Uh, I, I want to say Babel. We used to play ball with a guy okay. with the same name. All and, right, and Babel? they always said Babel. Yeah. All right. That's probably Raquel. Benson from Lancaster. Yeah. Uh, we got a senior taking on a freshman here. We look back at our um, placement match down there, and Moan has come back with a takedown of his own and some near fall, and he now leads five to two against Greeno. And working that run in that arm bar right now, and he could have Greeno in a lot of trouble, and that Matt Russell back down there could be over real soon, and there it is. We got. Um, a minute two, so it'd be 3.02 was the pin time down there as Moan now moves on in second place for Iowa Grant Highland with a pin. Well, so Greeno that, is still going on. That's the big thing. Yeah, he's still going on. The junior gets a shot at the state tournament plus a chance at a wrestle back. Here, Kickapoo Varge might get a champion here, and they do. The Gianni Babel, you said it was? Babel, yeah. Babel, she gets the fall, and Kickapoo Lafarge will have an athlete at the Women's State Tournament next weekend. How fast was that pin? That was, uh, they flipped it off already. It might have been a minute five, according to what I saw up here. But Yep, that was close enough. Nice pin by her. 
So now we're gonna move up to 215 down there in our wrestleback matches. That might be our last one of the day down there. Uh-huh. And that would be at 215. That would be Egan from Parkview as he takes on um Is that Brock up? Brock up from Iowa Grand Highland. Bodie, Thank you. yeah, Bodie Brock up. Okay. Bodie Brock up. And we're down here on the girl side of the action. We're up to 145. And that is um, Sophia Paulson from Aquinas. And she takes on Kashelia Wiest from oh, yeah. Lancaster. Boy, That's the I good probably butchered that, but Wiest from Lancaster. We'll stick with that. I could do better with that. Wiest, yeah. Kashelia, I think. Kashelia? That sounds Kishale, nice. Kashel, because there's the, or it could be Hale. Kashel? I don't know. That's oh. a good one. Wow, we actually did run into a time limit down there. I kind of wondered that they wouldn't do that. Well, it might happen. Well, Paulson is going to pick up a takedown and looking for a power half on uh, Wiest, and she is going to get the turn here. Wiest, though, oh, a good reversal. Two and two. There was some back points in there, I thought. Oh, there's the fall. It doesn't matter. Ah, there you go. One twenty pin time. One twenty pin time for the young lady. Sophia Paulson wins there, is your champion from Aquinas. So that moves us on to 152. And we have a champion there from River Ridge, so there will be no match at 152 is um, Brittany Presh from River Ridge is your champion there. Then at 165, Rachel Shower is your champion there. Still undefeated. I don't know if she gets wins for today since she didn't have anybody to wrestle or not, but she's 21 and 0 on the year. Yeah. So that'll move us up to 185 now, where we'll have Andrea Logie from North Crawford Seneca, and she will be taking on McKenna Helms from Fenimore. Logie has had a fantastic year. Yep, fine 33 and three record there as we do have our placement match going on down at the other end. And we're down to our last two championship matches here for the women too. And probably our last two matches of the day counting that placement match down there. Well, we have the 235 pound match coming up right after this. Yep, and that'll be our last match of the day. Yeah, Logie, uh, she's uh, she's very very tough. Got the takedown going right after a half Nelson series here, and she's got some back points and the pin. Well, that didn't take long. A Forty second pin time for Logie from North Crawford, Adriana. So that gets us down to where we're basically got our t last two matches of the day. You can kind of tell the crowd is and found that out too, yeah. is the bleachers are getting fairly empty. But this is one of those matches here at the end that Mr. Manning stuck around for <laughs> because this is Kaylee Manning, yeah. the fine freshman, and she's gonna be taking on Sydney Cohn from Parkview for the championship. Take her away, Mr. Manning. Well, this is gonna be a good one here. We uh, wish the best to uh, Kaylee here as she's got her work cut out for her here in this matchup. Trying to go in on a single leg here is Cohn. Manning trying to fight that off. Cohn looking to get the head to the outside. Now Manning trying to get around the corner here and pick up the opening takedown. She will get it. Manning working in on the left side. Now Cohn gets out in front once again. Manning will break down Cohn. Cohn back to her knees. Trying to work a power half here is Manning. Trying to lift and turn Cohn. Cohn pretty solid here, not giving up position. Manning working out here on the side, got out in front a little bit too much here now, and Cohn is able to pressure back in. She's gonna get the reversal. 
Cohn will now take her turn at a power half, trying to turn Manning. Uh-oh, she does have her turned here. This is going to be a tough one now. She's going to have to roll through this. Yep. Uh, she caught pretty heavy now. Yep, there's the pin. Yeah, that was a tough one there. Just a little too much of an angle, and Kaylee not able to fight that one off. Well, Sydney Cohn with a 19-5 and five record, actually, would give her some wins there, maybe 21-5, yep. and five, a junior against a freshman. Yeah. So a nice year, though, for Kaylee. Second place here at sectionals and a second place at the Bi-State. We do have a finish down there, and Brody Bokop keeps his spot as second place down there and will be your second place finisher down there with a pin. Well, and you never know if there's not uh, enough, you know, Manning might have a shot at going, you know, uh, on, a, on a bid kind of thing. You just never know. Well, that's for sure. Is like you say, um, you get um, hopefully some other school. And like you say, we don't really sure what the criteria is going to be for an extra qualifier to get in this year. Yep. But um, we'll see. I'm sure it'll have something to do with records and stuff. Well, that ends that real quick there. Boy, it did, didn't it? You know, and see there, that's kind of cool to see Mr. Timmy Terrell walking across the mat there. It's <laughs> good to see him still <laughs> kicking around here. Yeah. Well, quickly, I know we're getting close to where we want to wrap up, and I can't give you any more information from the Dells. So we're going to recap quickly here our state qualifiers by weight class, and then we're going to probably sign off for the day here. Is It's been a wonderful day again, but at 106, your champion was Aiden Grunfelder. Your second place finisher was Parker Melsna from Cashton. And in third was Jaron Grimsland from North Crawford. So at least two athletes up there by the Viroqua Westby area. Then at 113, your champion was returning third place finisher, Jake Fitzpatrick. Second place finisher was Lucas Orloff from Peck Argyle. And then your third place finisher was Elliot Kite from Mineral Point. Moving on to 120, Roger Fleggy returns to the state tournament again. He goes in first place, followed by um, Jaden Greyer from Westby's. He makes a return trip to the state tournament. And Lakota Brewer, the freshman from Riverdale, going to the state tournament in third. At 126, the sophomore Brody Meese from Riverdale wins the championship. He will be followed by Alexander Radovich from New Lisbon, and in third place was Danny Finley from Parkview. So Parkview already had a wrestler going to state. I should have read that right earlier. Okay, at 132 for the third week in a row, Hunter Stevens beats um, Rowan Carey. So Hunter Stevens is your champion. Rowan Carey, number two, and Gunnar Womat retur returns to the state tournament in third. At 138, we have in first place, Elliot Biba, the fine senior, He's followed by Waylon Hargrove, who came back through the wrestle background, and Reed Sawyer will be in third place. Then at 144, your champion is Ian Crapp from Fenimore. In second place, Zach Maline, who came through the backside to get second. Brock Hinderman in third place at 144. At 150, your champion was Silers and Zavich from Fenimore. Second place, Tyson Imhoff from Iowa Grant Highland. And in third place, Trevor Paulson from Aquinas. Then at 157, we're going to kind of guess at this one. We do definitely know the champion is Tristan Stelt. But I'm going to go with the fact that maybe um, Waller was satisfied with his third place finish. And we're going to say Bussy was second from Iowa Grant Highland. And Nolan Waller qualifies for the West, Ithaca Weston team and goes in third place. Then at 165, your champion there was Cade Rule from Mineral Point, he returns to the state tournament. He's followed by Ethan Moan and Seth Greeno gets Chad Johnson and the DeSoto Pirates, a, a, a participant at the state tournament at 165. At 175, David Moline continues his trip for a repeat championship at the state tournament. He's followed by Riley Wanick, the fine senior who had a touch of injury here in the finals, but he Hopefully he gets better for the Madison tournament. Nathan Blaski from Fenwar came back and got third. <coughs> At 190 pounds, your champion was Tyson Martin, followed by Wyatt Onan in second place, and Sam Schwingles 
from Parkview Al Albany in third. Then at 215, your champion was Jason Schrammick, the returning state champion from Blair Taylor takes the championship. He was followed by Brody Brokop in second. And in third place was Wesley Egan from Parkview. As Parkview was able to qualify three athletes for the tournament. That, that, then at 285, your champion was Evan Gratz from Fenimore, followed by Grant Matthews from Riverdale. And in third place was Brett Zilkowski from Aquinas. So well, let's, yeah, and let's take a look at the girls here, Kirk, uh, real quick. At 100 pounds, it is going to be Kylie Klum, the fourth place finisher uh, of Westby uh, return trip to the state tournament. And it's going to be uh, Gra uh, Gracie Rambalski out of Independence. Uh, she will ma or check that she was defeated by Low. It's Brooklyn Low of Fenimore. First period, uh, she gets first with a 230 pin. At 114 pounds, Marissa Klum comes back and wins 12-9 of Westby to take the championship. 120 pounds, Delia Collins uh, out of Mineral Point gets first with a 16-second fall. It is uh, Frankie Groom of North Crawford Seneca with a minute 23 pin at 126 to win. 132, it's Olivia Ball. She moves on with a 139 pin. And uh, Johnny Babel of Kickapoo Lafarge with a 105 pin. A lot of pins in that. They really went after it. Yep. Sophia Paulson with a pin and 120 to get the victory. That was at 145. At 152, it was an automatic uh, placement. Brittany Pecci uh, out of uh, River Ridge with the championship. 165. It's uh, Rachel Shower of Fenimore. She gets the automatic bid. And uh, Mineral Point, uh, for, at Mineral Point here, Adriana Logie uh, picks up the win for North Crawford Seneca with a 40 second pin. And then a pin here by Sydney Coyne, uh, Coyne of uh, Partyville. She picks up the win over Kaylee Manning of Ithaca to move on to the championship at 235 pounds. So, Kirk, tell you what, in the end, uh, a lot of great wrestling here. Uh, it's interesting. We'll have to see. I know you're probably looking at teams with, with uh, who had the most uh, qualifiers in that. <clears throat> you Quickly know. trying to get through that. I'm getting yeah. close. Well, we do know that uh, DeSoto picks up a qualifier. Cashton picks up a qualifier. North Crawford Seneca picks up a qualifier. So that's great to see. We'll be able to watch uh, those guys down the road here uh, next week, beginning on Thursday. And, of course, we don't know where everything is going to fall into place because of the automatic uh, uh, seating that goes on anymore. So we will have to wait and see. Just winning that, that uh, sectional championship does not guarantee uh, a Friday match. No, it doesn't. That's for sure. Yeah. Right now it appears that it's the three. I just looked at the three bigs. Yep. Yeah, that we looked at before coming in. And right now it looks like they were all, both all very close. To, you know, Aquinas and Iowa Grant with it looks like seven qualifiers and Fenimore with six qualifiers. Riverdale had also quite a few qualifiers too. So. Yeah, I would, I would guess that they had uh, at least four. We hope Wanik is uh, uh, going to be okay and he'll be able to wrestle uh, later on here today uh, or, you know, beginning on Thursday. So Riley Wanik, we wishing him the best of luck and uh, quick healing there as he got banged up a little bit in the end. But Kirk, the final here, what a great day at Mineral Point and a great job here by the Pointer crew. Uh, just before five o'clock, we're all done with wrestling at about 4.45. Yep. It's always Mineral Point ever since they built this new school. I believe it was back in the late 90s, or early 2000s. It's just always been a pleasant site to come to and a great host here. Uh, just a huge tournament turnout. It never, and especially this year with the top three teams in the state here, it just didn't disappoint at all. Right. Remember next week, everything is tape delayed. We will have that on our uh, WWVP YouTube channel. We'll have the rebroadcast of today's uh, tournament a little bit later on tomorrow night, sometimes Sunday late afternoon, Sunday night. And we'll get the card and the taping from uh, Wayne and Shelly Keenan over there at Wisconsin Dells, and we'll get that up and running for you 
so you can watch all the matches over again and again. For Kirk Layer, I'm Ken Manning saying thanks for watching, everyone, and we hope to see you down at the state tournament. Stop up and say hi. We'll be up above. Not sure uh, what that section number is, but we've been in one spot for a number of years. I would imagine we'll stay in that uh, same uh, venue. So, again, for Kirk, I'm Ken Manning. So long, everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week on the mats at the Cole Center.